Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. Holy Spirit, come now in this place, in this moment, come now. Guys, good day. Welcome to Grace Ministries USA. My name is Ryan. I want to thank you for stopping by here at Grace Ministries USA. We do everything we can to try to help people who are living in sin to get away from that line of thinking. We put up devotionals five times a week for this purpose to help us to think clearly, to feel confident in our decision making as we're going through our week. We want to know what to do. We don't want to have to worry or have hesitation and doubt and fear and living in shame and guilt. These things are not from God. Resentment, anger, those don't come from God. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear. We don't have to live in condemnation. We can understand the world through the lens of God's eyes, the gospel, the holy, living, written, mighty word, not culture, not politicians, not man, not media, not social media, not your family members, co-workers, people in general will disappoint us. They will let us down. So to know what's really going on in the world, we get in God's word, the Bible, the gospel, y'all. Today's devotional, speaking of the gospel, one of my favorite verses of all time. Every verse in the Bible is amazing and has its own effect if you ask God but this one here is powerful. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. Matthew 22, 32, y'all. Belief in the afterlife isn't unique to our time. Almost every culture believes there's something beyond the grave. If you look at Egypt, for example, Archaeologists discovered a solar boat in a tomb of a pharaoh who had died 5,000 years ago. This dude put a boat in as he was dying in his grave. Why? The boat was intended for his use in sailing the heavens into the next life. My man was getting ready. He knew what was coming. It's interesting to note that in the time of Jesus, many of the Jews held an aberrant view of the afterlife. They didn't look at what scriptures taught. They didn't have the slightest clue or even think to ask. When we read the New Testament, we tend to think of the Pharisees and the Sadducees as one group of people. That was not the case. In reality, they were bitterly divided. They were divided. The Pharisees were what might, might, what we might describe as the theological conservatives of the day. They believed in the teachings of the scriptures. They believed the gospel. They believed in an afterlife and a final judgment, as do I. As a Christian, I have the same beliefs. I do believe that we will have to answer for the things that we've done in this world. The Sadducees, on the other hand, were theological liberals. They didn't believe what the scriptures said about a judgment or an afterlife, nor did they believe there was any kind of resurrection. They all had different beliefs. They all viewed the world differently. They all saw things in their own light, not God's eyes. And they accepted only the first five books of Moses as inspired by God. Only the first five books. The Bible is a big book, man. There's a lot of writing in there. As the aristocrats of Jerusalem, the Sadducees were largely in control of the temple. They basically ran the temple as far as the money and all that, the exchanges goes. They were responsible for the operation of priesthood as caring for the flock. And they obtained their wealth through the temple concessions of money changing and selling sacrifices. They were frauds. They were phonies. They were everything we see today. However, they weren't 
very happy with Jesus because on two occasions, he went into that den of thieves, that temple, and overturned the table, saying, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a den of thieves. God was saying, the church is for church things, not for personal feelings and emotions and it's you're there to worship God that you have a purpose you're not there to make money that's in Matthew one day they came to Jesus with a pro provocation provocative question they came to Jesus with a provocative question teacher Moses said if a man dies without children his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name well Suppose there were seven brothers. The oldest one married and then died without children. The oldest brother married and then died without children. So his brother married the widow, right? His brother married the widow. But the second brother also died and the third brother married her. This continued with all seven of the brothers in the family. Last of all, the woman also died. So tell us, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? They were trying to trick Jesus up as many people did in that day with these stupid questions. This is what he said. For all seven were married to her. Matthew 22, 24 through 28. Boom! Jesus told them, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures. You don't know the Bible and you don't know the power of God because you don't study the word. For when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. That's scripture. In this respect, they will be like the angels in heaven. Long after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob died, God said, this, this was long after, all of them have died. God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is, he is the living God. He is the God of the living, not the dead. Verses 29 through 32, according to Jesus, there is life beyond the grave. He and he alone can address this topic with authority because he died on the cross to pay for our sins. I think he would know about dying and being resurrected. Those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ never die. That's my prayer. That's my hope. That's my wish that you, as you go about your week and you're struggling and you're having a hard time and you find yourself in those places of frustration and discouragement and pain and heartache and resentment and anger and frustration in those moments i pray that you turn to god and you ask him to come in and when he does he will help you and he will do it in a way that is specific to you in your life in your way in your will in your purpose because god speaks to you the individual he's in the details god is in the details i pray that as you go about your week you get that you understand that guys we are in a battle we are in a spiritual battle we need god we need god in school we need god in government we need god in communities we need him everywhere what's happening is insanity turn to god ask him for help he will step in he will do what only he can do that's one of his many promises guys if we said something that helped you in any way please give us a thumbs up subscribe help us share the channel we're trying to reach people in the name of jesus for his will for his purposes but we can't do it alone we need help so please give us a thumbs up a subscribe help us out that would be awesome thank you so much for listening hopefully god said something specific to you in your details in the moment that you find yourself in because only he can do such a thing as that god bless you have a great day Talk to him. Tell him. Turn to him. He's there. He's powerful and he will help you. God bless.